Hello and welcome to a new issue of the Indicator Spotlight. This is where we feature indicators from our NinjaTrader 8 library. A short video, usually about uh, 10 minutes, uh, with the explanation of uh, a indicator concept, some of the functions, uh, and how you can use it in a trading setup, uh, along with a link to where you can download the indicator. And this time we're talking about the C-score. We had a few questions uh, on the C-score after updating the market analyzer columns for one of our premium uh, indicators, the VWAP indicator suite, identifying different standard deviations uh, in the market analyzer columns. So in this spotlight, uh, we'll talk about how you can do that uh, with the oscillator values on your chart. And uh, if you uh, like these spotlight features and want to see more of them, please subscribe to our channel, give it a thumbs up, uh, leave, me, leave me a comment or some feedback and let me know that you're out there. If uh, there's no response or feedback, we won't know whether to make more of these. So if you like it, uh, hit the thumbs up or if you want to make sure to catch upcoming episodes, hit the subscribe button. All right, so let's uh, start with something uh, most of us are familiar with, the bell curve and uh, standard deviations. This is uh, very useful for creating statistical representations of expected outcomes. If we assume a normal distribution of data points and illustrate them with a curve, the majority will fall within the bell-shaped form. And uh, at each side of the bell, we'll then have the tails of the curve. Uh, giving us uh, the basis for making predictions. And uh, in statistics, uh, there is also the empirical rule, the uh, 68, 95, and 99.7 is a quick way to remember the expected percentage values defined by uh, the normal distribution. So the data points within one standard deviation represent about 68% of the data set and the 95 and the 99.7 are then the second and third standard deviations. So the C-score is calculated by subtracting the uh, population mean from a individual raw score and then dividing the difference uh, by the population standard deviation. This conversion process is called standardizing or normalizing and the C-score refers to how many standard deviations a data point is removed from the mean of the data. And uh, values above the mean have positive standard scores, whereas the values below uh, the mean have negative standard scores. So a, a C-score of 1 means that the data point is one standard deviation above the mean. And conversely, for the minus, first standard deviation and the second and third standard deviations then refer to the c-scores of two and three and if we're talking about outlier events they are the so-called th uh, three sigma events uh, with the data points outside the third standard deviation infrequent events for example the Swiss National Bank's decision to unpack the franc from the euro a few years back, or a virus outbreak that we see uh, these days, infrequent, as I said, but uh, they do occur from time to time. And uh, if we apply the C-score to the uh, awesome oscillator, we can then use the expected percentage values and apply them to conditions for entry and exit rules. The uh, awesome oscillator from uh, Bill Williams is uh, a MSCG indicator, very similar to uh, the standard version, which is uh, included with all uh, charting programs. However, the awesome oscillator is calculated from uh, simple moving averages, whereas the standard MSCG uses uh, exponential moving averages. Also, the uh, default periods for the fast and the slow uh, moving averages are a bit different. So we see here 5 and a 34, whereas the standard version uses 12 and 26. 
And finally, be aware that uh, the awesome oscillator uses uh, the midpoints of the bar as input values, uh, whereas the standard MSCD is calculated using the closest. So that's just a little bit of background information here on the awesome oscillator. Traditionally, the uh, easiest way of using this is just these zero line uh, crosses, basic signals to indicate a change in momentum, looking for buying and selling opportunities. Uh, downside, of course, is that uh, you have choppy and sideways markets that produce too many signals. And so this is not a, a very reliable approach for a system. A better approach, uh, I think, is using the so-called saucer setups, which is uh, similar to uh, what we define as retracement signals in one of our premium indicators, the zero lag oscillator. So that is a situation where you identify a pause in the current trend oscillator values here all on the same side of the zero line. So you have an early advance here and then a pause with a decrease here in the oscillator values. So the dark green are decreasing oscillator values. And then it picks up again here with the lime green for a uh, continuation setup indicating a renewed buying pressure. And so the idea here is to catch the sweet spot entering in a early trend continuation scenario before the trend has advanced too much. And uh, so as we'll see here coming up, we can use the C-score to normalize the awesome oscillator values here and to identify setups, uh, saucer setups that uh, occur within one standard deviation of the data in the look back period. So in this chart, uh, the awesome oscillator output was normalized over a 100 bar look back period. It is then used as input value for the C-score, requiring the oscillator values to be within one standard deviation in order for the saucer setup to plot. And as you can see here, the late entry signal was eliminated. This is the C-score down here. And using the awesome oscillator as input value, we can then see an indication here when the output is moving outside the first standard deviation. And I've hooked this up to Bloodhound here. And if you're wondering how to set that up, uh, I'll create a separate video on that and send it, send it out if you're interested. There's a button towards the end of the indicator spotlight post here. So if you're interested, uh, you'll get more information on how to set that up. Of course, we can uh, also use uh, the C-score to identify scenarios that are outside the, uh, the second standard deviation, likely oversold or overbought scenarios. So here we have uh, a C-score threshold moved out to a minus two C-score for a short scenario. So we can use that to identify when the awesome oscillator moves outside the second standard deviation to look for potential exit points. Just keep in mind that values outside the second standard deviation alone is not enough to validate good exits. We see here we're moving out the second standard deviation here and the trend continues for quite a bit here. So perhaps combine this here with a change in, in slope for defining exit conditions. But as you see here, we can uh, easily uh, use the C-score to define these uh, standard deviations of the 100 bar look back period of the awesome oscillator uh, values. So to wrap up here, we've seen that the C-score can be used to normalize uh, oscillator values. Uh, specifically, we looked at how to create a fixed scale to statistically condition entries and exits. So for the entries, we wanted them to occur within one standard deviation or within 68% of the data set. And for exits, we wanted uh, the data to occur outside the second standard deviation, outside 95% of the data set. 
So as I said, this uh, month's free download is uh, the C-score indicator. You will find that in the advanced oscillator category here. Members to uh, the indicator library also have access to all of these other indicators that you'll find in here. Uh, we have the MACD uh, BB lines, which is a very popular one, projection oscillator. There's also the modified uh, C-score. And then we have uh, the standard momentum oscillator category as well. And that's where you find the awesome oscillator, acceleration, deceleration, the LBR 310, and many, many others. In total, I think we have about 140 plus indicators, all available for a one-time payment of 150 bucks. And just to specify, that's for all of the indicators. And it's a one-time flat fee, not a monthly fee. All right, so uh, that's it for this spotlight. Appreciate uh, you taking the time and tuning in. Again, if you like uh, these features uh, and want to see more of them, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Let me know that you're out there. And uh, again, if you're interested in how to set this up in Bloodhound, uh, I will come out with a separate video on that and send it along. If you're interested, just register uh, towards the end of the post below here. All right. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great rest of the week, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you sometime soon. Take care, and bye-bye.